The purpose of this video is to demonstrate basic analysis of joints in built-up beams. For this objective, we consider a fairly complicated beam. It involves two T-sections at the top, at the bottom, two plates, and the beam is connected by bolts placed at a distance S. The spacing between the bolts is eight inches. The dimensions of the T's and the plates are given on the figure. And our task is to determine the maximum shear force such a beam can sustain, provided that each bolt can carry the load up to 15,000 pounds. Let us start with identifying uh, a relevant free body diagram. So first, let me copy the cross section. And now I would like to identify the low T. The low T will be eventually the free body diagram because what I will do, I will cut through the bolts on both sides of the beam. And now if I look at this low T, it is probably not difficult to sort out that the area A star that will be exposed as a result of this cut is shown in yellow and we denote it A star. We can continue with dealing with this A star area and we will compute Q or the first moment of inertia uh, I'm sorry, the first moment of the area A star with respect to the z-axis. To this end, I show the z-axis. You can see that the top of the T is shifted with respect to the z-axis by one inch. And as a result, Q could be computed as follows. Here I show the z-axis on the plane. So here's my Q. I'll start with this rectangle. It is 0.5 times 3 B times H times the distance from the z-axis to the centroid of the rectangle, which is 1 plus half of 3 is, of course, 1.5. Now, for the bottom rectangle, it is 3 is the base, half is the height, and then the distance from the z-axis to the centroid is 1 plus 3 plus 0.25, which is half of 0.5. So, we get 10.125 inches cube of you. Let me compute the moment of inertia for the entire cross section. So here we go. So on this figure, I show the entire cross section here. On this, I'll only show the T, okay? But the moment of inertia will be important to calculate for the entire cross section, not just for T. To make my calculations a little bit more clear, let me copy the result for Q. I'll be referring to the numbers in this equation when I write down the moment of inertia for the entire cross section. So here we go. First, I have two T's and I have two plates. Therefore, I put 
two in front of the entire expression. I will start with the plate. The plate has thickness 0.5, h is equal to 6, here comes 0.5 times 6 cubed over 12. The parallel axis theorem says that there is no second term simply because the z-axis of the plate coincides with the z-axis of the entire cross-section. Now we come to the bottom T. So first is the total rectangle, 0.5 times 3 cubed over 12, plus 0.5 times 3 is the area, plus 2.5 squared. Please pay attention. 0.5 times 3, the area, times 2.5 squared. For the lower rectangle, 3 times 0.5 cubed over 12. That's the moment of inertia about the axis going through the centroid of this flange. Plus 3 times 0.5 times 4.25 squared, and I get 93.25 inches to the fourth. So you can see that the calculations of geometric properties, right, are closely related. So it's good to keep in mind if you want to check your results. So let us move further. Now I'm ready to draw a free body diagram. So again, this is my entire cross section. And this is my T. Bottom T. I show here the force. N star of X. So that's the resultant of the stresses. Uh, sigma acting on the cross-section X, the length of this element along the axis is S, so the other force is N star X plus S, and the total force, shear force, transmitted by the joints involves two balls, therefore FB and FB, these are the balls, right, this ball and on the other side is a ball. And now I can write down that delta F, that's the force transmitted by the joints, is equal to 2FB, is equal to the difference between N star of X plus S and N star of X. And this is equal to this expression, right? So the last part is standard. It doesn't matter what the geometry is, we'll always have a formula like this because we're calculating the difference between uh, two M forces. We can do the final details. So from the previous page, we have this equation. Now, uh, to calculate the force, FB, of course, first I divide by 2, here's 1 half, and now I divide by S and multiply by S. The purpose for this is very simple. I can approximate this expression by the shear force. So 1 half is retained. This part becomes the shear force. And then I have S Q over I Z. And so this gives me the result that the shear force is equal to uh, 2FB times I Z over S Q. And the numerical result is obtained using given data for the allowable force in the bolt, calculated moment of inertia, calculated Q, and given spacing B. 
between the balls along the 